You see, the governor is uh, with us uh, in uh, in the house, and it's uh, Governor Tate Reeves. Good that, morning, sir. How are is you? Is that a new host? Good morning, Paul. I'm doing great. How are Man, you doing? He, but does does he look good in that chair there? <laughs> doesn't he? I mean, the the suit and everything is perfect. I, I like this outfit. I mean, this is this this is showcasing our potential host of the future. So, good morning, Governor. How are you, sir? I'm doing great today, Paul. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Let me get this one out of the way because we never have enough time. But I talked to you yesterday on this uh, CRT thing here that's concerned a lot of people. It was an article, uh, but I got it from several different people. I hated to disturb you on a on a Sunday, but gave you a chance to look over that. Y'all Politics also had it, and um, I got this from the Department of Education, and the official statement there was, we are revising our social studies standards and they are out for public comment now. This effort was led by a group of teachers in Mississippi. The board voted on their December meeting to send them out for comment. We have filed with the SOS the paperwork to get the process started. When the board voted in December, we filed with the SOS, just like we do with any other APA filing. Uh, some people see this as a backdoor entry of putting CRT in the curriculum. As governor of the state, your statement, sir. Well, we are certainly looking into it. My policy staff has been having multiple conversations with uh, those at the Department of Education and otherwise. As you know, Paul, uh, dear, in my executive budget recommendation that I released just six weeks ago, uh, we called on the Mississippi Legislature to uh, outlaw any teaching of CRT in the state of Mississippi, and I'm hopeful that the, uh, the legislature, when they come in uh, tomorrow, will get to work on, on doing exactly that. Was it preemptive to any legislative bill? or I mean, This doesn't have to have legislative approval. It is uh, uh, something that just goes immediately into law for the curriculum of 2022. Well, we, don't have any, it... we don't have any evidence at this time that that was the, the intent. When you look mm -hmm. at the, uh, the board of the Department of Education, um, I, I'm not sure that, that that's the case, but we're, we're looking into it a, as right. we speak, and, and we'll take necessary action should it become necessary. So we'll have some clarification coming sooner or later. Sure. All right. Man, where do we start here? The 2022 session is uh, is beginning tomorrow. Uh, what do you want to see? What? For, let me ask you th this way: what, What's the priorities from the governor's view? Because there's so many different things out there. Uh, some people say it's got to be the uh, the congressional redistricting that takes priority. Some people say medical marijuana. But your thought as governor? Well, the number one thing that the, the Mississippi legislature uh, needs to focus on uh, is helping to continue to create an environment which encourages long-term capital investment and long-term job creation uh, in our state. We have a very business-friendly environment. We, we have had tremendous successes over the last couple of years in, in businesses wanting to locate and create jobs in our state. Uh, the reason for that is because the way in which we've dealt with uh, the last two years in the pandemic, we focused on keeping businesses open and, and making sure that uh, everyone across our state but also across America understands that, that we are a state that is open for business. And oh, by the way, we have a workforce that understands and values work and gets up every day and, and goes to work and, mm -hmm. and produces. And so uh, every piece of legislation, in my view, that helps push us towards a, a more and stronger and more viable economy um, is one that we should focus on. It's the reason that I've been talking for the last several years about uh, eliminating the income tax, for instance. Uh, the elimination of the income tax would improve our competitiveness when you look at states like Texas and Tennessee and Florida, all three states that we compete with every single day for capital investment and job creation and bringing better and higher paying jobs to our state. Uh, and all of them have an advantage over us because they do not have an income tax. And that's something that, that's important. And, and the other piece of that, is, of course, is investing in our people. Uh, the the efforts that we've made working closely with our legislature to uh, improve upon workforce development, workforce training, the creation of Accelerate Mississippi um, is making a huge difference now uh, when we can sit down with these company CEOs and talk to them about how we will invest in our people to make sure that they have a workforce that will produce for their shareholders. Um, it really makes a difference in anything we can do to continue to improve upon that and invest in that I think is critically important. To the people of the state, do you think we have a good shot at this? I mean, is you've had enough conversations with the House and Senate, and we know what the House's stance is, uh, but the Senate is, is not there yet as far as the income tax. 
Has there been any uh, lead way at all as far as getting closer to that reality uh, in the session? I certainly think that we've made a lot of progress over the last year. Uh, we've had many conversations with the leadership um, in in the Senate, the the, the individuals that are uh, going to to make these decisions, and 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 I'm I believe very much that they that conceptually they they are interested in in the elimination of the income tax. They want to make sure mm-hmm. that uh, we do it in a, a responsible way, and I understand that, and 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 they're doing their job. But yeah, I think that we've we've made tremendous progress in the last six months to a year, and and we'll continue to do so. And and that's one of the things that um, every legislative session uh, brings an opportunity, and and I I tend to be an optimist, Paul, and so uh, I'm optimistic that we're going to make further uh, movements toward uh, eventually eliminating the, the income tax. Look, we, uh, and I got the story for a little bit later on, there were 836 bills covering a range of topics uh, that go into effect Many of them at the beginning of the year, as far as California is concerned, 836. They are so restrictive, it looks like Venezuela. That's one of the reasons that we've got to be more competitive, because there are a lot of businesses uh, that are leaving, as you well know, in California, and they're looking for places in the South to go. And that's just one of the things that's the stumbling block in our state. Let's talk about uh, the redistricting. Uh, that has to be done and uh, pretty fast as far as the congressional the congressional and the reapportionment of, of, of the state and Senate House seats won't happen at the same time, though, will they? That's correct. Uh, well, I mean, they could happen at the same time. and That'll be a decision made by uh, the legislative leadership. Um, just to make sure everyone across Mississippi understands that the governor has a role in the redistricting of congressional seats. The, le- mm-hmm. the governor does not have a role in the redistricting of legislative seats. The legislature redistricts itself. Um, and so we, we've been uh, looking at the, the maps that have initially been proposed. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, just by virtue of the way in which the 2nd Congressional District has um, been made up for, for many years, uh, what you're looking at here this year is going to be a tweaking of the districts. It's not going to be um, a major overhaul. Uh, and because of that, you'll have even uh, regardless if, in fact, these maps are passed, uh, each of the incumbents will uh, have a um, a real good chance of getting reelected, and and so we'll see um, we'll see what the legislature ultimately sends me on on a congressional yeah. redistricting. But my guess is the the, the map's not going to change uh, significantly. Is there any talk? Let me go back and circle back to the um, uh, the income tax. Is there any talk of a quid pro quo as far as medical ex- uh, Medicaid expansion uh, for a you give me this, I'll give you that in the, in the House and Senate? Well, I'm not aware of any. Um, the, 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 now, to, to be fair, there there are a lot of deals that are cut uh, inside the Mississippi Capitol, but I am aware of no uh, no uh, proposal to to do that. Um, that's certainly not something that I would be for. I will. I, I am for eliminating the income tax, and I'm opposed to Medicaid expansion or Obamacare expansion, um, and will uh, act accordingly. We had 4,885 cases on the last report. The new one will come up. It'll be a a, a combination of three days, so it's going to be rather high. No thoughts of any uh, new uh, mask mandates or anything else in our state? Because I I haven't seen with the – have you gotten an update as far as the hospitalization is concerned? Well, the the total number of cases have increased significantly over a very short period of time. Just mm-hmm. it was just a two and a half weeks ago uh, that that our average seven day uh, numbers were in the two hundred range, and obviously now they're um, between five and ten times that number. Hospitalizations have increased also. Uh, they have not increased at the rate that total number of cases have done, which is in line with what we're seeing in other parts of the country and, quite frankly, other parts of the world, um, because this particular variant, the, the Omicron variant, appears to be highly contagious but not quite as dangerous as uh, the, the previous versions. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, we're not going to have continued increases in, in hospitalizations, because I expect that we are. Uh, over the next two to three weeks, it's going to be a very difficult Difficult time uh, here in Mississippi, along with everywhere else across the the country. But individual Mississippians, we have almost 1.7 million that have gotten the first shot. They know they have ways in which to take care of themselves, and and we trust yeah. them to do so. Researchers at Columbia University are estimating. I was pulling this story to end this one. Uh, uh, are estimating the Omicron variant COVID-19 cases could peak 
in the United States by January the 9th with numbers at about 2.5 million cases a week or potentially reach about 5.4 million cases weekly but are estimating a January 9th peak of, uh, of Omicron in the state. We'll talk about medical marijuana when we return with the governor coming up next. Time. All right, let's talk about this uh, medical marijuana and um, the sticking point for you and uh, for I think a lot of others in the state now since this thing has marinated for a while is some of the language in the medical marijuana. I've said it many times, I'm not opposed to a medical marijuana, but it must be for the patients and not for the profits. We've talked before, and I think we both agree that uh, this one is leaning more toward profits and, and recreational than it is for the patients. But where do you stand now on the uh, day before the session uh, convenes? Well, uh, as I've said, just like you just said, I, I've repeatedly um, said to the, the public of Mississippi as well as to the uh, individual members of the legislature that I am willing to sign a true medical marijuana bill. Uh, I think the way in which you uh, described it is very, uh, very appropriate in that um, we want to make sure that, that the patients have the ability uh, to get uh, what they need. But the bill that, that is currently written, and there's been a lot of positive changes made to it since its initial drafts, but it still has a, a situation from, from my perspective that just allows every individual just to get a little bit more uh, weed than, than I think uh, we ought to start with. And so here's the, here, here's the deal. If you are going to uh, get medicine for any other illness, uh, you go to the physician, and the physician looks at you, uh, diagnoses you, and then uh, gives you a prescription that you can then take to a pharmacist, and that pharmacist uh, dispenses that amount of inf of um pills to you. Uh, as the bill is currently written, what's actually going to happen in Mississippi is you would get a medical marijuana card. Uh, that marijuana card uh, allows for you to get uh, marijuana up to whatever the maximum amount is uh, for up to one year. And rather than going to a pharmacist to get it, you would go to a what's called a dispensary. Uh, my family and I traveled to Colorado this summer, and as we were driving uh, out from Denver into the mountains, uh, at every little small town, uh, there was a. Uh, the first thing you saw was a green building, which we will see in many small towns across Mississippi. Uh, inside that green building uh, is what the legislature will call a bud tender. Whereas a pharmacist has six years of education plus thousands and thousands of hours uh, prior to their ability to dispense uh, medicine, uh, this bud tender is going to be required to have eight hours of um, training. And so it's that individual uh, that will be dispensing marijuana to every Mississippian that has a, a marijuana card. And so because of that's the setup that the legislature decided to do, what I have suggested to them is we ought to limit the amount that this bud tender who has eight hours of, of, of um, training, limit the amount that any one individual can get in any one day. The current amount that is allowed under the bill is three and a half grams. That's equivalent to 11 joints a day. What I have asked our friends in the legislature to consider is reducing that number perhaps by half whereas there's still a significant number of uh, opportunities. I have offered to them that I would certainly uh, be open to allowing doctors and or pharmacists to uh, make exceptions where uh, there was ex ex exceedingly uh, high need for, for the marijuana. And, and I think you're right. One of the things you said, which is important, is I think there are a lot of people uh, in the legislature and in the state uh, that understand that we ought to start uh, more conservative and start uh, less than the three and a half grams that's currently in the bill. And I'm hopeful that mm -hmm. the, um, through the legislative process that, that gets adjusted. The uh, and Perez has maybe you can we had a state legislator on during a remote over in East Mississippi and I'm still this still is in my mind that about an ounce of marijuana is the same uh, mass as about a small loaf of bread. Now <laughs> it kind of puts it visually, didn't we? He we we did have somebody tell us that at uh, at our remote uh, over in East Mississippi that an ounce of marijuana is. Composite about the same as why, a small loaf of bread. Why are you dragging me into this? Well, because I just wanted to, if I'm wrong on that, I wanted you to stop me, you but I, I don't wrong. think you I was wrong. wrong. 
I, I don't know, but well, he said it, so I'm not wrong. I'm just repeating what he said. <laughs> but well, the, the other part of this is that Too when you wrong, start talking dude. about a bud tender, it's almost like bringing in a sommelier. And, and this is, I mean, we're not even talking about what the interaction is between your present medications and uh, this drug. So why is there a hesitancy about bringing in the pharmaceuticals or the uh, pharmacists uh, of the state, Governor? I can't answer that question, um, Paul. That's a, a decision that um, certainly is still open for conversation because this these, this bill does have to go through the legislative process. Mm -hmm. It typically would mean it would go through uh, a committee in, in the House or Senate and then go to the floor and then uh, go over to the other chamber. And so I hope a lot of these questions are asked. I think that's important. Um, you know, I, I personally think that uh, there should be uh, an involvement by a pharmacist. Uh, I have uh, suggested to the legislature that while the system that, that they currently uh, have in the bill is not the one that I would have chosen, that I am willing to uh, mm -hmm. agree to a bill that as long as we limit the total amount that, that can be uh, received in any one day by any one individual, I think 11 joints a day is too many. You know, one of the things that you and I talked about the last time we were on, last time I was on, is that, you know, a lot of the uh, proponents of this legislation, they want to talk about ounces. They want to talk about grams because it really is hard to conceptualize uh, exactly how much marijuana is in each of those two measurements. It's the reason that I spend a lot of time talking about the number of joints that any one individual can get yep. because it's a simple Google search will tell you that um, it's .32 uh, is the measurement for the average size of a joint. And so I think most Mississippi would tell you that when you start getting the allowance of up to 11 joints a day for as many as 300,000 Mississippians um, or about 3.3 million uh, joints a day allowable in the state, um, at some point you move beyond medical and, you know, and, and move into the recreational phase. And I don't think that's what Mississippians want. I don't think that's what's well, best for the, uh, the long term uh, for our, our state's economy. And, and then with, with that amount of um, excess, if there's some sur surplus, uh, what happens to that as far as uh, it's a whole new story? Is, is that the only sticking point right now with you as far as the amount? Anything else in the bill that that you would like to see, or is a no, is a is a non-starter. Well, there, there are a lot of sticking points in the current bill, and, and I think that's one of the things that's been uh, misinterpreted. The, the, the legislature, um, the, the, in, the individuals who have been working on this, have made a lot of changes since the initial draft, and most of those changes we, we requested and, and are very good. The, the system as it's currently drafted is not the way I would have set it up, but if we can get the control of the amount that any one individual can get, I think it, it's certainly a system that I'm willing to allow for. Paul? Here's my prediction. I don't know what's going to happen in the legislative session, but my prediction is regardless of what happens in the legislative session, this particular program's peak popularity is going to be on the day after it passes. And every day thereafter, as this thing begins to get implemented, it's going to become less and less popular. That's what's happened in Oklahoma and a lot of other states. Well um, and so I want to make yeah. sure that we are uh, we are taking all things into consideration. Uh, I, I know there's a, there's a, you mentioned the word profits. There's a lot of money um there's a lot of money involved well, me, in this and let me um, ask you this worries me in, in the in the time we have remaining here is there a possibility that you would allow that bill to to go forward without signing it well there's always a possibility of um of exactly um, depending upon what what occurs during the legislative process. Again, mm -hmm. I'm a I'm an eternal optimist, Paul, and so I'm I'm mm -hmm. uh, optimistic that as the legislature comes in uh, tomorrow, that, uh, that there are going to be a, a large number of of individuals, particularly uh, Republicans from rural areas, who who look at the the bill as it's currently drafted and said, you know, this th there's a lot of good things in here, but perhaps we can make a few tweaks and a few changes, and we can right. uh, reduce the amount of marijuana on the streets of do our you, state. Do you have Do you have any problems? Problems with uh, my understanding now, it may, it may have been changed that uh, it uh, is a two year moratorium on any of the legislatures having any investment into marijuana in that industry in the state. Is that still where it is? Well, again, the, 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 the language has changed a lot over the last several uh, months. I, I, I don't have a, a strong opinion on that one way or another. I, I've noticed there are a lot of people in Mississippi that have spent, uh, that have, quote, unquote, invested a lot of money in this, and, and, um, and they're putting, uh, and, and they're pretty passionate about it. 
All right, we got limited time here, and I've got other things to talk about. But tell me what one one of the, the, the critical things when we come back in a short segment here, because didn't get a chance to talk about this. What is it, $1.6 billion? And I think we got the last of that money uh, several days ago, which was, uh, what was it, five or $600 million uh, that has been cleared to come to the state. We'll do the final segment with the governor. It is coming up next. Later on. All right, let's talk about the um, the amount of money coming from Washington D.C. and and some of your thoughts on where that should go and uh, is it under a timeline? Well, the ARPA funds do have a timeline, but it's not mm-hmm. nearly as short as what we were dealing with uh, a couple of years ago uh, when the money came down. There's approximately $1.8 billion in federal funding uh, from ARPA. But, Paul, don't forget that because of our uh, economy uh, booming over the last couple of years, we collected mm-hmm. over a $1 billion in state revenue more last fiscal year than was uh, anticipated, and we are over a half a billion dollars this year. So my projection is that... Uh, we'll probably have an additional $2 billion in state monies. And so that's the reason I think, number one, uh, we ought to focus on uh, returning some of that money to the taxpayers, give the taxpayers a pay raise. Uh, in addition to that, I think we ought to uh, increase pay for our teachers. Um, you know, one of the untold stories about what's happened in Mississippi over the last 10 to 15 years is the significant increases in educational achievement by our students. Um, in fact, if you if you get there was a recent article in in the Economist magazine, and they pointed out something that that no n- nobody in in America much um, certainly nobody uh, in the print media in Mississippi is talking about, and that's the tremendous gains that we've made. For instance, on the NAEP test, uh, that's the nation's report card. Mississippi's fourth graders have actually, in terms of reading, have moved from 49th in the nation to 29th in the nation. In in the year 2019, Mississippi was the only state, or our students in the fourth grade were the only state that actually saw improved scores in our NAEP testing for fourth grade reading. What we're doing is working, and we as conservatives believe we ought to reward success. And so I've proposed significant increases in teacher pay uh, because they've made tremendous progress. Um, uh, Our students are doing better, uh, both on a relative and an absolute basis, and we ought to uh, invest in our teachers. Not only should we invest in our teachers, we should invest in our people. I proposed $130 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds uh, to bolster workforce development, workforce training to accelerate Mississippi. Those are things that that I think we can do that uh, will make a a true impact on long-term economic growth in our state. One of the things you talked about earlier, Paul, that, that I think is extremely important, and that's, that's crime, focusing on crime. Uh, certainly in the city of Jackson, I've um, proposed uh, significant increases in our capital police. Uh, we saw um, the CCID was created by the legislature several years ago. Um, we have 78 officers today. I propose we move that to 150, uh, and I'm happy that the legislature and the Joint Legislative Budget Committee uh, funded some portion of those increases, and, and we're going to continue to work to get more funding uh, because police presence works, and we've seen a significant decline in the total number of officers uh, at the Jackson Police Department, and, and I'm hopeful that the city leadership will see the need to uh, start uh, reinvesting uh, in the police, and we're certainly going to do that yeah. in our capital complex. Have you seen the December numbers? Uh, are they? Uh, I'm sure they're up, but have you seen the December numbers? I have seen the December numbers, and, and we are uh, well in excess of $100 million over uh, projections for the month of December. We we are uh, our economy continues to do very well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the old days, you've heard me say this before. In the old days, we used to have an awful lot of people looking for jobs. Uh, today, we have a lot of jobs looking for people. True. True. Well, hopefully this will be the year that we put something together as far as we're, and everybody's been looking at this, and I think we've been doing a good job, but as far as workforce development, what will we do as far as this legislative session that's going to address that? Well, the, the legislature made a huge step forward uh, a couple of years ago in in passing a legislation that, that revamped 
uh, our state workforce investment board uh, we actually had a meeting with uh, just in the last couple of months with all of the various parties uh, to include the uh, institutions of higher learning the community colleges the uh, state department of education uh, as well as um, all of the state agencies that deal with workforce when you think about the department of employment security and and the department of um, human services and and so many other state agencies that have a workforce component the department of corrections for instance as we talk about reentry and that's one of the most important things we'll do this year is is work with the legislature to improve our reentry program so look it, it's a coordinated effort we've got to continue to invest in it uh, but i think most everybody in legislative leadership is is on board uh, with continuing to invest in our people and that's something we as mississippians can be yeah. proud of Always a very informative visit. We thank you, Governor. Appreciate it very, very much. It's on tomorrow. This is a three-month session, so uh, we got to get to work pretty fast to get it done. Governor, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me.